Hello, and welcome to the International Quilt Museum's First Friday Fun. I'm Lauren Holt, Education Coordinator at the museum, and this month, our First Friday program will be presented by quilter and eQuilter.com president, Luana Rubin, who will be looking at the mid-century modern aesthetic and its influence on modern art quilts. You might be familiar with the mid-century modern aesthetic from movies and TV shows set in the 1950s and 1960s, or through the work of famous architects like Frank Lloyd Wright and Joseph Eichler, or furniture designer Eero Saarinen. Mid-century modern is generally defined as a design movement that emphasizes clean lines, simplicity, and an honest use of materials that places efficiency and function over decoration. Because of that simplicity and focus on function, it has remained a significant influence on industry design and other art forms into the present day. If you enjoyed that aesthetic or are interested in modern quilting trends, I hope you'll check out the webinar later this evening. For now, I'd like to take a look at earlier influences on quilting. Like the mid-century modern aesthetic, these are changes in artistic trends that were heavily influenced by international art, globalization of ideas, and new changes in technology and readily available materials. We'll look primarily at quilts made between 1700 and 1900 with emphasis on old world medallion quilts and crazy quilts. Indian textiles, especially their printed cottons, were introduced to Europe early in the 17th century. Europe had not yet developed the technology needed to use mordants, which are necessary for helping dyes adhere to cotton fibers, and so many of the colors of Indian textiles were new to Europeans. This, combined with cotton's comfortable feel and the ease of washing, led to such extreme popularity that both England and France banned imports of Indian textiles in an effort to save their silk and wool industries. Indian palampores printed and painted textiles that were used for table coverings, floor coverings, and prayer rugs were some of the earliest Indian textiles to reach Europe. Their centered symmetrical design with its emphasis on flowers and vines may have influenced the popularization of medallion style quilts in European and American designs. The pattern of this bright red palampore is made of woodblock designs printed on cotton and is of a style that was especially popular in the Netherlands. The medallion quilt on the right features embroidered images that were considered exotic and representative of Southeast Asia at the time, including men in turbans holding parasols, peacocks, and unicorns. This quilt was made in the mid-1800s, but the page of the design of the turkey red fabrics was first created in Persia and was very popular in India, where the little teardrop shapes of this print were called buta. In Europe, the name Paisley came from the Scottish city of Paisley, where manufacturers with access to jacquard looms created mass-produced copies of the expensive hand-woven cashmere shawls that were being imported from India. This quilt's pattern of hexagons resembles some of the simpler designs seen in mosque tile work across the Middle East. Hexagon mosaic patterns were first used in English and American quilts in the late 1700s. They gained new popularity after 1850, possibly in connection with the aesthetics movement. In addition to its pattern, this quilt also uses two prints that feature exotic birds, a bird of paradise and the ever popular peacock. The aesthetic movement of the mid to late 1800s was a challenge to mainstream Victorian views of the arts. Instead of art reflecting social or political ideas, followers of the aesthetic movement thought that art should be beautiful for its own sake. The aesthetic movement is often characterized by influence from images of East Asia, prominent visual usage of natural symbols, especially birds, feathers, and flowers, and colors that included dark woods with gold highlights and the blue and white porcelain of fine china. The peacock, native to India and a symbol of power and beauty, was an especially popular image from the aesthetic movement. The peacock room at right is often cited as one of the most famous examples of the aesthetic movement in interior design. This quilt, made in 1930, shows the enduring appeal and influence of that Eastern imagery. The 1876 Philadelphia Exhibition, also called the Centennial Exhibition, was the first World's Fair to be held in the United States. 37 countries contributed to its exhibitions, and for many of its nearly 10 million visitors, it offered a first glimpse at global cultures, and especially at the arts and aesthetics of Japan, 
Crazy quilts are one example of art forms influenced by the Centennial Exhibition. With their asymmetrical design and jagged pieces sewn over each other, they closely resemble the Japanese cracked ice design and quickly gained popularity as distinct and exotic when compared to more common Victorian styles. Another important influence on crazy quilts was that new manufacturing techniques led to silk becoming available at cheaper prices, which in turn led to more quilters being able to use it in their projects. New chemical dyes also added to the vibrant color palette available to quilters at the time. In addition to the overall design and use of silk and other opulent fabrics, common elements of crazy quilts also link to elements of Japanese imagery, including pieced or embroidered fans, embroidered flowers, and spiders and spider webs. Other Eastern design elements, such as the peacock seen here, remained popular as well, and the almost painterly style of embroidery called satin stitching, seen here on the birds, was a European style also popularized by the Centennial Exhibition. Like the mid-century modern aesthetic, these themes were driven by new materials, new connections, and new ideas. So for our challenge today, I am asking you to think about materials and ideas that are relatively new to you or to the world today. What sort of art might you make based on those? Some things that I think of are fabrics made of bamboo and plastics made of soy and corn, or solar panels woven into clothing, aerogel buildings on Mars or the moon, and bacteria that eat radiation protecting spaceships. You can see that there are a lot of plant themes there, so the art that I make will probably be related to plants in some way. You might be more inspired by circuit boards and quantum computers kept so cold that we can control the movement of individual atoms. Or maybe robots and AI that can help us take care of ourselves and each other. Or maybe you're inspired more by moods and feelings, by the push and pull we're all experiencing right now between digital interconnectedness and physical distance, or by something else entirely. Whatever it is, I hope you'll make art with it, and I hope you share that art with us. If you'd like to display your ideas in a traditional quilting format, there is a blank album quilt template linked below. Or you could take some inspiration from the crazy quilts we've looked at and make a collage, mixing all your ideas together. Whether you work on paper or in fabric or in paint or in sculpture, you're welcome to add your art to the comments of this video or to tag us on Instagram. Thank you for joining us and I hope you enjoy the first Friday presentation.